morning. Uh, got a little, got a little cool front coming in. Uh, I hope you can hear me okay. The wind's blowing a little bit, but uh, I felt like I needed to make a video this morning. Uh, it's been on my mind for a day or two, uh, and this video is is specifically about hand shock, or the words hand shock, and how it's used. And this is this is try to clear clear it up a little bit for for beginners, people that are trying to learn to shoot these uh, hill style or ASL bows. Uh, if they're trying to learn how to shoot them, uh, this will help you. Uh, hopefully help you understand better what that means and, and what its negative effects are and how to avoid it uh, or if it even exists. Uh, I, I watched a video, it doesn't matter who made the video, I watched a video of a, a particular bowyer uh, marketing his bows and this kind of spurred me on. I, I, I see stuff in the forums. I don't really participate in the forums very much. I see it on Facebook sometimes, you know, some of the groups and things like that. It pops up occasionally, so I figured it's time, you know, I'd like to try to talk about it and uh, hopefully help my subscribers and help newcomers uh, understand what people are talking about and how, how to avoid it or if it even exists for that matter. Uh, this bow design, as far as I know, uh, the, the ASL or American Semi Longbow, uh, I don't know the exact history of it, but I'm pretty sure that Howard Hill uh, was the one that, that made the basic design, you know, 100 years ago, basically, you know, probably 1928 or somewhere along there. I have no idea, but it, it's now the English Longbow has been around much, much longer than that. That's a totally different kind of bow we're talking we're talking about American semi long bow or ASL bow or hill style bow okay uh, John Schultz learned what he learned from Howard Hill and you, you see John Schultz bows and, and stuff like that these bows are typically uh, their, their draw length a lot of them that you see if you're probably not going to see a lot of them for sale but if you see one it's a you know uh, X amount of length by 27 or 26 inch draw, you know, 55, 65, 75 at 26 or 27 inch draw. These guys were, had quite a bit shorter draw length just because of their style of shooting and that's, that's the way they shot and that's the way a lot of people shoot. The bow itself, <laughs> I hear a lot of people say, number one, they can't shoot them or they don't want to shoot them or they don't like to shoot them because of hand shock, all right? I believe that is uh, a little bit of a exaggeration. Probably they don't have the time it takes to learn how to, how to shoot the bow. They probably, they may not have had somebody explain it to them, what was the proper way to hold the bow, uh, draw the bow and, and shoot the and set it up. So, uh, but when you hear a bowyer say that they have designed out the hand shock they've designed in more speed uh they've you know they, they what they're basically what they're trying to tell you is, is they've taken a hundred year old bow design and designed out all the problems that don't exist in this bow uh i, I know they're trying to market their own bow i know that they're trying to market what their what their version of the heel style or asl bow is but don't be uh, confused whenever somebody says, well, this particular bow or this particular bowyer, the way he builds his bow has more hand shock and I, can't, I, I just can't shoot it. Don't, don't, don't be confused by that, all right? To me, a, a well-made bow, I can't make one, I'm not a bowyer. I, I, I attempted it. 30 years ago, I made a couple of bows. They did not turn out very well. I, I just don't have the tools or the skills, for that matter, to, to build a bow like, they, like, like what these are. Uh, one thing I will say, uh, I never read Howard Hill's books or John Schultz's books. I watched a video of, of John Schultz one time, and he talks about some pretty basic stuff about how to shoot a bow. And, uh, but, but basically, he was reiterating 
what he learned from Howard Hill. So uh, Howard Hill, back way back there, 1920s, so probably or so, somewhere along in there, uh, literally would take a, a, a stave or two billets of wood, cut dovetails, join them together in the middle, and then uh, you know shape the bow with with a with a with a saw and rafts and all the tools, and then tiller the bow and string it, and that's what he shot. So he didn't have uh, access to fiberglass laminations, carbon laminations, and all these things. He didn't have none of that. He, he backed his bows with a, some other kind of material. I can't remember what it's called, uh, but some of his bows were not even backed, I don't think. Um, and I'm sure that somebody that is a Howard Hill expert would, would be able to, to comment on that, but uh, I do know I did read this <clears throat> somewhere, or heard it somewhere, that Howard Hill said that <laughs> all things being equal, that a string follow design bow would be inherently more accurate. And why he said that, I don't know. Obviously the man knows, but uh, that's that's just, that was his kind of his take on a string follow versus a back set or whatever. Now, hand shock, direct, this is, does it even exist? Uh, I would say more the, the more of a more of a accurate description of what happens when you shoot your bow is recoil. Okay, uh, every traditional bow, whether it's a longbow, a recurve, a hybrid longbow, uh, whatever kind of bow it is, there is some amount of recurve. I mean, uh, recoil in, in that in that bow when you shoot it. Okay. Now, these bows, this, this hill style bow, or ASL longbow, is a very simple but complicated design, okay? It has the laminations in the limb, you know, whatever the cores, these happen to be bamboo cores and uh, maple laminations under under clear glass all right the handle is straight okay probably one of the most biggest misconceptions is is this arrow shelf is the center of the bow that's just simply not true okay so if you are holding this bow I'm gonna to try to get my hand in a position where you can see it. If you are holding this bow where all of the pressure is up here, right behind where the arrow shelf is, if you're holding that bow with a straight wrist like that, and you shoot this bow, that is not gonna feel good, okay? And people that typically do this are uh, recurve shooters that have the big target handles on them and a deep dish for their hand to fit up up in there with a straight their wrist is straight like this when they're shooting the bow. So when you shoot that, if you have all of that weight right in this right in the line right here with a straight wrist like that, that's not <laughs> that is not going to feel good. And you have you have to be open minded as to this particular equipment. Okay. Now the center of this bow, what I'm trying to get up close, where is, is closer to about right here, somewhere about an inch and a half or so below the arrow shelf. All right, that's the center of the bow. So when you're holding this bow, let me get around this way. Well, let me hold it like this. When you're holding this bow, the weight is more evenly distributed. I don't have any weight on the heel of my hand, but I have it down here, kind of in this ball area right right in this area of my hand so it's closer to the center of the bow all right more of a, a full more of a full grip on the bow versus that your hand needs to be down on the bow in this where the center of pressure is right in right here on the center of the bow all right that does a couple of things when you shoot it that helps with the timing of the limbs, meaning when they're when you pull the bow back and you draw this bow, 
the tips of the bow are trying to come back to brace, all right, if one's coming back faster than the other, that's going to create vibration or the recoil or the supposed hand shock, all right? So, that said, the grip is a huge, huge thing to avoiding uncomfortable shooting, all right? Make sure that you play around with that and you'll find it. If you, if you start out basically with, with a full grip, and I don't mean grip it, death grip, but you grip the bow up with all your fingers, okay? And you distribute the weight down here in, the, in that crease all the way down in your hand where you have most of that weight right in the center of the, where the handle is, that will create a lot more comfortable shooting situation for you. That's, a, that's probably, that is the, one of the big key things, okay? The next thing that I'm gonna talk about is probably just as important, if not more important, is arrows. You cannot take one of these bows with a, with a 200 grain shaft, carbon shaft of some kind, and a 90 grain field point on it, and little bitty old two inch feathers. You cannot take this thing and shoot it without this thing sounding like a gun going off in your hand. If your arrows are too light, too small and too light, it is gonna create more recoil or so-called hand shock. I can shoot this bow all day long with my hunting weight arrows. I, I, I target practice with them. I don't have different sets for target practice or hunting or whatever. I shoot what I hunt with. Okay, I put field points on them, obviously, because I don't want to tear up every bale I got, but just for, just for walking around shooting and stuff like that, either that or a blunt. And they're all matched, you know, pretty close to, to the, to the uh, grain weight of my broadheads. So I'm not deviating from that very much. This is a hunting weight arrow. You may not have arrows like this available to you, readily available. They don't sell them at Academy. They don't sell them at, well, they do. I think they do sell wood arrows at Cabela's, I think. Uh, but you have to you have to get arrows that are matched for your draw weight, your draw length. And, I, and I'm going to make another video about arrow tuning. Uh, I had a, had a subscriber ask me specifically about making an a, a arrow tuning video, and I'll make another video after this one. But this right here is for hand shot. This arrow right here is a hunting weight arrow. This arrow weighs 675 grains. Between 675 and 690, somewhere along in there. Almost 700 grains. This is a, this is a 190 grain broadhead, okay? It's a wood shaft. It's a tapered, port or, I mean, a tapered uh, Douglas fir shaft, okay? Uh, I don't have overly huge feathers on it, five inch feathers, parabolic. I, I, I like those. You know, I like a different, a lot of different ones with parabolic works. And shooting too light of an arrow in that bow right there, it's going to be a bad experience. You're not going to like it. It's not going to sound good. It's going to, you're going to be tying balls of yarn on your string and everything else, trying to get this bow to quiet down. When the quickest and safest for you and the bow remedy for that is to shoot the, a, a, a heavy enough arrow that you can get the, uh, good penetration whenever you're hunting. Well, I'm going to have, there's going to be somebody say, well, those arrows are too slow. Well, if you want to shoot a fast bow, 300 feet per second or more, go buy a compound. I don't know. There might be one somewhere, but I don't know if there is a long bow that shoots a 300 feet per second arrow. And if it does, it probably sounds like a gunshot when you shoot it. You know, I, I don't know. But for hunting applications, 55, 60 pound bows with a 675, 700 grain arrow with a 190, 200 grain point on it. They hit hard, they kill, they're very quiet. When you shoot them, the bow sounds good. When you shoot it, I mean, my brace height, my brace height on those bows are about six inches, six and a quarter inches, somewhere along in there, okay? Uh, you can toy with that a little bit, one way or the other, make your bow even, even tune it better, you know, but I mind they shoot fine for me about six, you know, six or six and a quarter inches. So, that said, you, you, 
don't be, don't make a decision on a bow because somebody sell, tells you, well, this bow has no hand shock, but the one right over here that somebody else makes does have hand shock. Uh, when they start designing out things like that, they lengthen the, the riser, they widen the limbs, they put reflex and deflex in it, then you start getting into a, that's a hybrid longbow. That's not an ASL longbow. They can call it string follow all they want to. And one of them even said it, it, it has string follow after it's strung. It makes no sense at all. Doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, when it's unstrung, you can obviously see string follow in, in the limbs in the design. Okay? When it's strung, you, I, I don't, that, that, that just didn't make any sense to me. So, you're choosing your bow or you're trying to set your bow up make sure that you have that hand pressure is in a, in a good spot and even finger pressure on the string and I've talked about all of these things before in other videos but this is specifically about hand shot string pressure when you change the pressure I shoot split finger like this okay if you're putting more pressure on your index finger than you are on your middle finger or any combination thereof you're actually affecting the, 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 the timing of those limbs again, and that, that causes vibrations, and it causes recoil, all right? You have to find your groove, like we talked about before, you find your groove, but grip and arrow weight and a good string on your bow <clears throat> will greatly reduce any perceived recoil, not hand shock. Hand shock is that is a, a way overused term, in my opinion, okay? So anyway, I hope this helps, guys, and if you have any questions, please comment down below, and I'll be glad I try to answer. If anybody has a question, uh, I try to answer those. Uh, there's quite a few comments in there, and I you know, always try to read the comments and make sure that, that I've addressed things that people need to address uh, or think they need to be addressed. And, and uh, uh, but anyway, if you have any questions, please leave them down below, and, and I'll, I'll be happy to try to point you in the right direction. If I don't know, I bet I know somebody does know. So anyway, I <clears throat> hope this helps, guys, and uh, enjoy your day, and keep waiting on this little cool front to come in. I'm, I'm definitely going to be sitting on the tripod this evening. So have a good day, and we'll see you on the next one.